good morning and uh, welcome. Um, it's sunny and bright here in Cornwall this morning, so I'm trying to do this in the shade before it gets too hot. Uh, my name is Anakin and I am a Norwegian living in Cornwall in the UK and I design knitting patterns and teach knitting workshops. So this is my new pattern Albertine. It's not actually a new pattern, it was first designed for the Knitter magazine a few years ago now I think. Um, but I've decided to self-publish it because I always get a lot of questions about it. And I had it knitted up in a new yarn, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, I absolutely love how it, how it knitted up. It also got beads in it. Can you see that? So let me just talk about, I was going to show you how I will wear this. Talk about, a little bit about the construction method and also talk a little bit about the yarn. Um, so this is a crescent, very deep crescent shawl. Um, it's almost, well, I would probably describe it as a two thirds of a circle shawl. Um, it uses the Elizabeth Zimmerman pie formula, which normally creates a circle, or you can use it to create a half circle shawl. But this has actually also got slightly um, more increases, so it actually creates two thirds of a circle. Um, so a bit more of a crescent than a half circle, really. Um, but I really like it. Um, the good thing with this kind of shawl is that this kind of shaping is that you don't actually have to do any um, shaping in the lace sections. So if I just come a bit closer, so can you see here you've got like a row of holes here, can you see that? You've got some rows of holes here and then you've got a row of holes here before the lace section. That's where all the increases happen and that's what shapes the shawl. So when you're actually doing the lace, you're not doing any shaping, so that makes it a lot easier. It's only got beads on this final section from like here down, so it's about half of it. But it's also where you've got the most stitches. And I add beads using the crochet hook method, um, which I'll link below to my tutorial on that. So let me just show you how I will wear this. So because it's quite deep, the first way is just as a shawl like that, just like your shoulders, just keeping your shoulders warm, perfect for the summer dress, maybe you're going to a or um, Christmas season dress, party dress, maybe you're going to a party in the winter and you're wearing a little black dress but you're worried about your shoulders getting cold, or you're going to a summer party and you're wearing a sleeveless dress or something and you're worried about your arms getting cold or covering your shoulders, this would be perfect for that. You can also, you can either pin it with a short pin, which I always forget to bring a short pin out with me, or you can just knot the fronts together and kind of wear it like that. And that kind of keeps it on. Doesn't mean that you can't move your arms quite as much, but you know, it's enough to do what you need to do. So that's another way of wearing it. And you can see it covers, I'm quite tall and it comes right down to my um, hips. That's my dog barking. Okay, so that's another way of wearing it. You can also fling it a bit more around, a bit more casually. So, for example, I tend to, when I do this, kind of do the bit sort of sideways and just fling it over your shoulder like that. I would normally, if I wear it like this, I normally put a, a short pin here just to stop it because if it's windy, this just kind of blows off all the time, which is annoying. So, when I wear it like this, I tend to wear a short pin here just to keep it on and then you can kind of drape this however you like depending on how cold it is so if I am um, if I just for example took this with me to wear as a scarf maybe on a trip and then um, I might be on a plane or a train or even in the car or something and it's a bit chilly then I they, I would put this around my shoulders like this just to keep my upper body warm so quite like it like this and then the way I would probably wear it most of the time is as a uh, scarf. So I just put it around my neck so you got the widest, the center at the front and then you kind of got it just hanging down like that. And that means that you can either wear it in the autumn and spring. I quite often just wear it like this over a thicker jumper or a poncho when I'm walking the dog and things like that or uh, you can even put a uh, coat on and then just have this so if you zip your coat up then hang this kind of hanging out of the top of your coat um, 
chunky scarf, so quite fashionable now for, for this. You get the warmth, it's not chunky, it's quite fine blade, so you don't get the bulkiness, you still get the look of a bigger scarf. So let me just come a little bit closer. So that's what that looks like. So you can see the beads there. But you can do it without beads if you prefer, but I quite like the beads. So this is knitted in um, lace flower from Shopple. So I'm just going to grab. I don't actually have this colorway at the moment. I am doing pre-order, so if you see this in the first week after I've published a pattern, you can pre-order the kit. Uh, it'll be shipped out middle, between the 15th and 20th probably of August. Um, so this is a lace flower. This is a different colorway, obviously. This is actually the colorway used for the letter, uh, the last show I published. So the yarn is, um, let me just find the right, it's 100% superwash uh, merino. It's 150 grams and it has 1200 meters. So if you're familiar with lace ball from Shopple, it's the same yarn it's just a bigger skein so lace ball is 100 grams and 800 meters this is 150 grams and 1200 meters and also the self-striping is um less hang on let me just put that down again so with the lace ball you would get more frequent stripes with lace flower you get fewer color changes so it works a little bit better for a lace shawl i think like this because you have got less stripes to worry about now you have you start here with the shoulder just a few stitches you have a lot of few stitches for this top blue section than you do down here so if there is one color that you want to dominate more um, then another thing so that you may want to think about whether you pull the yarn from the center of the ball or from the outside i always pull from the outside i don't know which this was knitted by one of my sample knitters um and i don't know whether she pulled from the outside or the inside um a lot of people pull from the inside but i always do the outside <laughs> so this is albertine it was first published in the knit magazine the only changes i've made to it from the knitter was i made it bigger so this is a little bit bigger than the one that was in the knitter magazine but otherwise it's exactly the same so a pattern is available now i will put the link to the pattern below i'll also put the link to my website where you can pre-order the yarn if the pre-orders are closed then you can order the actual, just order a ball of the yarn um, on my website. It's the same page that I'm linking to. You also need beads. I can't remember off the top of my head how many beads, but you'll see that on the pattern page. I use size 8 seed beads from Debbie Abrahams, which I also stock in my shop, so I'll link to that below as well. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you'll enjoy knitting Albertine. I will link to the tutorials page on my website where I have loads of tutorials on various lace knitting things, uh, how to fix mistakes, how to add beads, all that kind of stuff, which if you're new to lace knitting, you might find helpful. Also, if you're not already a member of my Love of Lace Knitting Facebook group, you might want to join um, just to talk about all things lace knitting. Okay, so thank you very much for watching and have a lovely day.